coffee time and it's Jeff time. I'm pretty happy about this. I figured it's about time I would react to Jeff on his own doing solo stuff. Um, if you haven't seen the voice play react that I did, I've said quite a few times, I haven't heard Jeff's falsetto voice, his head voice, any of that kind of range for him much. Some men do struggle to access their upper registers and given Jeff's range, I wouldn't have been surprised if that were the case, but some of you have said that this one is a good representation of how he uses his head voice. Um, yeah. Two jumps in a week. Bet you think that's pretty clever, don't you, boy? Flying on your motorcycle, watching on the ground beneath you. Every time he gets me. Four, three, two, one. E one. E one. Hold beneath you. You kill yourself for recognition. You kill yourself to never ever stop. Another mirror, you're turning into something you are not. Don't leave me. I don't leave me in drown. Don't leave me. I don't leave me. In a few things that I want to talk about here. His head voice, while it's well controlled, there are no obvious cracks or breaks. You can hear that it's lacking the strength that he has in his chest voice. That's normal for most of us. Our chest voice, it's the register we use when we speak, it is naturally a lot stronger than our head voice. He did a nice job controlling those notes. He did attack them a lot softer. Again, not unexpected. I was almost expecting it to be a little stronger, not in terms of a mix, it just sounded a little bit like it can maybe have used a bit more support from his core. So when we talk about core support, a lot of singing teachers, vocal coaches will tell you to sing from your diaphragm. This is wrong. You cannot sing from your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is an involuntary muscle. What happens is you breathe in, as air goes into your lungs, your diaphragm comes down to make more space. And then when you exhale, your diaphragm raises again to sit in this resting position. You cannot physically tense your diaphragm. What you can do is tense all of your core support, all of your core muscles, your abs, your obliques, everything inside that will then support, support your lungs and your diaphragm and everything else in there. And I think it's really important that people stop saying, breathe from your diaphragm. No, no, we breathe from our lungs and we support from our core. If you've done musical theatre and you're doing your warm-ups before shows or for rehearsals, you'll quite often go through a lot of ground yourself and you know you find your knee stability on the ground and you really centre everything. And they might say, pretend you've got a string coming from the top of your head, pulling yourself up. So what they're doing is getting you to engage your core because that will help with your overall breath, with your speaking as well as your singing. So that is what I'm talking about when I say core support. If you've done yoga, or Pilates. I find it's a similar sensation to that being very centered and having that control over your breath that way. That's the best way I can kind of describe it for you. His vibrato was great though, shows he's still got a lot of strength up there and yeah. So I also wanted to touch on this part here where he's doing the four screens. The noises that you're hearing in this I, I definitely don't think are what is being done. He could have clapped into his microphone like four times to get that layered clap effect that we're hearing. I think it's unlikely. I think it is a synth clap, you know, electronic clap. Again, with his foot stamping on the floor. I don't think it's foot stamping on the floor. I think it's probably a kick drum. But he's done this kind of to get the visual effect, which is fine. A lot of people will do that. Doesn't bother me. I just want to let you know that if you try to replicate something like this, the sound won't come out as cleanly as it is here. The 
conversation You will be the one who cannot talk And all your insights fall to pieces You just sit there wishing that you could still live So that part there, those higher notes he was doing was in his chest mix. That's high for a Jeff to be chest mixing. And on some of those chest mix notes, I feel like you could hear a little bit of strain, just maybe a tiny bit of tension. He still wasn't forcing it out and screaming it out. So I'm not too worried from a vocal health perspective. But in general, when you're doing your chest mix, you really need to have that core support to help support the air pressure to come up and out. And that's all that should be happening. You shouldn't be raising your larynx, raising your chin, all of those things. If you raise your jaw as well, you're only gonna create further tension in your jaw as well as down here. So that's what I could kind of hear. He's a wonderful singer. He's done this for a long time. And I don't think he would do this if he felt it was particularly uncomfortable or that he was gonna do himself damage. But I just wanna tell you what I'm hearing. So if you feel this way, when you're singing, particularly if you're singing in your chest mix and you are rising here, you feel a bit of a strain here, stop and go and find yourself a voice teacher. We really need to work on strengthening our vocal cords as a muscle and not causing them damage. So if you're doing a chest mix correctly, then it's fine to practice. You go for it. You're not going to hurt yourself by doing it wrong once or twice. But if you're doing it wrong consistently and you're singing every day, whether it's just practicing or if you're on stage, it doesn't matter. If you're doing it wrong every single day, it might lead to vocal damage. They're the ones that hate you When you think you've got the world They're the ones who'll spit at you F sharp four. I know Jeff can go down into his zero with the subharmonics. Listen to that bit again because I want to see if his support was different on that screaming out part. Screaming out. Screaming out. E tends to be a better vowel sound, better placement for us to hit higher notes on. So if you're practicing higher notes that you can't quite hit, practice it on E's. Personally, struggle at the moment. I'm doing this is me from Greatest Showman and trying to get. For your glorious up there. <laughs> Haven't warmed up today. Terrible. Oh. And it becomes easier to hold. So then eventually I'll change it. For your glory. For your glorious. And work on it that way. If you are trying to hit higher notes, work on an E and see how that goes for you. there was because I realized he was singing the same line in three octaves and they were all in his chest range and I think that that is really impressive I bloody impressive to do it in three three octaves in your chest range That is very airy, which makes me think it's really starting to kind of push how far he can maybe go with his head voice. 
I'm not sure. I would love to hear him do some sirens and see, whoa, whoa, see how I can go because <laughs> that's a great way to do it and it helps to relax your vocal folds a bit. Again, what is he with the E ones? Oh, slay. So, Jeff, we know if you've seen my voice play reacts, you know I love Jeff. I, when he hits those low notes, something inside of me is just, uh, I can't move, I can't breathe, I can't really do a lot. His head voice, yes. He has one, he can access it, it's great. He has control over the pitch of it. He doesn't crack or break from what I heard. He worked up through his chest mix really well. Didn't hear any head mixing particularly going on. It kind of was chest, chest mix, head voice. Um, but that's okay, He's this isn't his general area of singing. So I don't expect it to be as strong as the other parts of his voice because simply it's not where he would normally sing in. If you are struggling with your head voice, a good exercise I find is sirens. So go, ooh, did you hear where my break was? I tried really hard on the way down so you didn't hear it. It's normal to have a break and the more you do these and the more conscious you are of how smoothly you can do it, the better you will be able to adjust your mix to finding that boundary where is your comfortable chest mix and your comfortable head mix so you can blend them together a bit more smoothly. Yeah, siren away, humming, literally. <laughs> Lip trills, most people can kind of go and that's fine, but to do it on a pitch and hold the pitch all the way up and all the way back down again, you will find your core support for your breath. So, To be able to do that without breaking your lip trill requires the support. So please try it. It also really helps with releasing the tension in your vocal folds because it's creating a kind of change in the pressure that we have on top of our vocal folds. So we always have some pressure underneath, pressure comes up from the lungs, makes the vocal folds kind of flat together like this, comes up and after the vocal folds, it's kind of a big release after that. What we're doing by this is keeping some of the pressure on top of the vocal folds kind of set back a bit so that our vocal folds can stretch freer of tension. It's similar with any kind of resistance training you're doing, it's the same with straws. If you are an intermediate or advanced kind of singer and you just have a few things that you're struggling with or that you want to tweak or work on or maybe get a different sound for it, please go ahead and flick me a message, flick me an email and I will find a time to talk to you and try and help you through it via Zoom or WhatsApp or whatever we want to do. So for beginners, I do prefer to be in person. So if you are in North Canterbury in New Zealand and you're looking for a voice teacher, hi, get in touch. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to finish my enormous mug of coffee. <laughs> yes. Today I'm going to go away and I'm going to work on some more reacts for you. So please keep your eyes out and hopefully I will see you soon. Bye.